Namaste, my dear friends. It's with great excitement that I welcome you to the first and introductory class to JavaScript. Yes, all of you have heard of JavaScript. I'm sure you've watched thousands of videos where people are talking about how important JavaScript is, how awesome JavaScript is. And I'm sure there are certain videos where people are talking about how much they hate JavaScript. Well, let me tell you one thing. Whether you love JavaScript or hate JavaScript, without learning JavaScript, web development is not possible. Now, before I start with JavaScript, and trust me, I am going to explain JavaScript to you in such a simple manner that you will become a master at JavaScript by the end of the series. But before you start with the series, you must and should have learned HTML and CSS. Without learning HTML and CSS, if you try to learn JavaScript, it will not make sense to you. So assuming all of you have already learned HTML and CSS, without wasting much time, let's get started. Before we start understanding JavaScript, first thing that is always most important before starting to learn any technology is the question, why is it required? Why do we require JavaScript? Let me show you a practical example, all right? Now, before we start, one thing which everybody should understand is, what is a web application? Now, if you don't know what is a web application, I have a video explaining what is a web application beautifully available on this channel. Please watch it, okay? But those of you already know what is a web application, the fundamental concept is very simple. This is our computer. In our computer, we have a software called as a browser, correct? This is called as a browser. Now, this computer is technically in the world of development called as a client. Now, let us assume this client wants to access a web application called a Swiggy, which is a food delivery application. But Swiggy is not available inside this computer. But there is no problem because there is another computer called as a server, which is there somewhere in this world, right? Inside the server, the Swiggy application is running. Now, what you call as an application is basically multiple files which contains code. Code for front end, code for back end, code for database. Now, usually the code for front end would be files inside which you have HTML, or it could be files inside which you have CSS, or it could also be files inside which you have both HTML as well as CSS. Like this, you'll have files, different, different, different set of files, okay? Now, client, because there is an internet connection available, is going to go and type a URL. In this case, www.swiggy.com. And one request is sent to the server. Based on the request, what does the server do? The server is now going to create a file in which there is HTML and CSS code. This HTML and CSS code it will take and for this request, it is now going to send a response back to the client. What is it going to send? A response. And that is what I'm also writing here. Now this HTML CSS file, when it comes here, please understand this software, which we call as a browser, Chrome, Safari, all these are browsers. The primary job or responsibility of a browser is to display the HTML and CSS on your screen. That is the primary job of a browser, to display HTML and CSS. And please try to understand, in technical language, we call this as rendering. What do we call it as? Rendering. So primarily what this fellow is going to do is, it is going to render the HTML and CSS for you. And that is what you will see as a front end. Now, whatever I showed you, if I should just practically demonstrate it, I am now going to take you to my browser. In my browser, see, this is my URL. I'll just go and say swiggy.com like this. Now, if in case I press enter, from Swiggy server, some HTML and CSS, oh, sorry, I've given the wrong spelling of Swiggy. So swiggy.com, right? You can see Swiggy came, right? Now, the server in which Swiggy is running bundled some HTML and CSS together for me and sent it, which is what my browser is displaying. Similarly, if in case I were to scroll down here and let us assume I am in the mood to eat a pizza, if I click on this, now it will send me information about the pizza. Again, what is this? This is nothing but HTML and CSS. So the browser receives HTML and CSS and it is just rendering it or showing it for me. In fact, if you want to see this HTML and CSS, you can right click on your browser and you can click on a button called as inspect. In which case, the browser will show you all the HTML and CSS which Swiggy has sent it, which it has received here. And in fact, you can see which element is what. If you click on this button, see, it'll show you this is the HTML CSS for this, this is the HTML CSS for this, different, different HTML CSS things you can be seeing here, correct? So I'm not talking about this in depth, but forget about it, right? I hope everybody understood this much. Now, the problem with HTML and CSS is it is static in nature, which means, what do you mean by static? Static means something which does not change. So whatever the server sent, browser is displaying. But now, if I want to change something here, Try to understand. Let me show it to you in a different manner. Look here carefully. Let us assume I have written some custom HTML CSS and I've created something like a food card, which is available in Swiggy, Zomato, and all of your websites, right? Now, please try to understand. 
This is also HTML and CSS, right? In fact, what does this HTML CSS look like? Right click inspect, you will easily be able to see what this HTML CSS looks like. You can see this is that HTML CSS. This is the button, this is that card, each and everything you can see, correct? Now, for example, if I go and uh, click on this, this is that add to cart. Now, what happens in actual websites is, now I'm just closing this and I'm going back to Swiggy. Look at this magic. If I click on add, do you see this HTML CSS dynamically now changes to one? If I click here to two, if I click minus one, if I click again, changes back to add. Which means the thought which must arrive at all of your minds is, how is this HTML CSS changing? Now, please try to understand if HTML CSS has to change, it will not change automatically. Somebody is changing it. Somebody is changing it. What do you mean we didn't understand? What I'm trying to say is, please try to understand. Actually, let us assume you went and you clicked on add. When you click on add, this HTML CSS cannot change. So earlier days, what used to happen is one more request would go to the server. The server would now prepare a new HTML CSS file in which you have everything same, but just that add is changed to one with a minus and plus button on each sides. It is changed. And that one part is what I am just showing to you like this, right? This change happens. How do you understand? After changing it, the server sends a response to us and that response is what is rendered. Which means next time I go in plus or uh, put press on plus, then to change it to two, again one request had to go, again one new file had to be created, and again that had to be sent, in which now again it will show me the entire page with just one difference, one would have become two. So can you imagine every time you interact with the Swiggy website, request, response, request, response, request, response, if this had to happen, how slow your, the website would feel, how laggy your interaction would feel. But that is not how modern day websites work. When I click, when I, let me just take you back to Chrome. When I go to Swiggy and click on add, no request is being sent, no response is being received. Automatically somebody is within my browser itself changing the HTML and CSS. If you didn't understand, it is like this, see? This is my food delivery cart, okay? So let us assume, I, when I click on add to cart, you can see nothing happens. No request, no response. But I wanted to change like this, this should happen. Which means what is actually happening here is, when I click on add to cart, somebody is automatically going into my HTML. It is going into my HTML. And inside my HTML, they are going here and see this button. This button, somebody is changing it. Somebody is automatically changing it. Let us assume I'll remove all this. And they are changing it to something which looks like this. They are replacing, somebody is changing the HTML and changing the CSS. And upon changing, magically this is happening. So somebody went and changed my HTML, changed my CSS. Now tell me, every time you want the HTML CSS, uh, CSS to change in Swiggy when you press plus and minus, do you think the Swiggy developer is coming, running to your computer, right clicking, going to inspect and changing it? No. Then the question is, who is changing the HTML CSS dynamically on the client side? Who is changing? That, my friends, is none other than a programming language. That is none other than a programming language. This programming language, which dynamically is going into my HTML and CSS and changing it. This programming language did not exist in the 1990s. It did not exist. Recently only they have created this programming language which can go and dynamically change the HTML and CSS. And that programming language, which is executing within the browser, which has the capability to access HTML, access CSS and change it dynamically within the client is what today is one of the most popular programming languages in the entire world, which is JavaScript. That is why friends, they say JavaScript is the language of the web. JavaScript is used to bring interactivity to your web pages. I hope you could get a picture of what I'm trying to say. And who invented JavaScript? JavaScript was invented by a great developer, Mr. Brendan Eich. Brendan Eich used to work in a company called as Netscape Navigator. And in the 1990s, internet looked something like this. Websites looked something like this. It was not as beautiful as today. And websites were very slow in their performance because whenever a user clicks on something and if the page has to change, a request response had to happen. And back then we didn't even have 4G, 5G and all these very, very fast broadband internet connections. So every time re-rendering of the web page had to happen via request response and is why websites were super slow. But today websites are fast, websites are interactive. 
courtesy of a programming language which is executing within the browser which has the capability of dynamically changing HTML and CSS. And that my friend was the primary purpose for which JavaScript was invented. But today JavaScript is literally used everywhere. That we will explore more in detail, but I hope everybody understood the need for JavaScript, right? Now that you understood about the need for JavaScript, let us see how we can execute JavaScript within the browser. Now that you understood what the primary purpose of JavaScript is, please try to understand. This is a browser which is there in our computer. Browser can be Chrome, can be Firefox, can be Safari, there are many browsers, right? But you must understand, inside a browser, only one programming language can execute. And out of all these programming languages, the only programming language which has been designed to execute within a browser is JavaScript. That is why though all programming languages are amazing, JavaScript is one language every developer should know because of this unique capability of execution within a browser, right? Now, there are many, many ways in which one can be executing JavaScript. There are multiple ways. But today, I'll be just showing you the most simplest way to execute JavaScript, which is within a browser inside something called as a browser console. And this, you can do it in any browser. So let me just show you what I mean by this, okay? So watch this. Now, if in case I were to take you back to Chrome, right? Now, this is my Google Chrome. And inside Google Chrome, all I need to do is, if you want to execute it, see, right click, click on inspect. Once you click on inspect, you will see there is something called as console. This is called as browser console. Just click here. Now, here you can type and you can execute JavaScript code. Let me just close all this. For example, in JavaScript, if you want to say print something, one way to do it is console. This is the console, right? Dot, you can say log. And within this, within double quotes, you can say what you want to log. Probably I want to log hello world like this, right? And now see if in case I press enter, it will execute and it will show me the output hello world. So the point is it is able to execute. For example, if in case I say two plus two, it will say four. If in case I say 5 uh, multiplied by 2, it will say 10. So clearly you can see within Chrome there is a programming language which is executing. And which is this programming language is none other than JavaScript. Don't worry about the syntax. I will teach you in depth. Am I clear to clear? Wonderful. Now that you guys understood it till this point of time. So my friends, the basic point you need to understand is this is Chrome browser. How did Chrome browser execute JavaScript within? For that, they have created something called as a JavaScript engine. And every browser has its own JavaScript engine. For example, Chrome has an engine called as V8. We'll explore it in detail later. Your Firefox, right? Mozilla Firefox have created their own engine called as Spider Monkey. Similarly, even Apple, who's created this Safari browser, has their own engine, right? So basically, JavaScript can be executed inside any browser. And how the browser is executing it is, is using the engines. Anyways, I hope. The need for JavaScript is clear to you. Now in the upcoming classes, we will dive deep into JavaScript. And trust me, you can crack any JavaScript interview if you focus and learn whatever has been taught in this course. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next class.